Okay guys, just wanted to do a quick video. Uh, ordered this brake booster conversion kit from CJ Pony's par Pony Parts. Um, I got a 71 Ford F100. It's got manual brakes on it, drums on all four wheels. Brakes on it, drums on all four wheels. Uh, here's my old master cylinder. Pulled it out. The kit is a pretty nice kit. Um, the only drawback is it doesn't come with any instructions at all. So when it comes, it's uh, you got the booster, you have the master cylinder, uh, you have this bracket here that mounts to your firewall. The bracket has this linkage on it. Uh, it's configured kind of like that. Uh, this would hook to the back of your booster. This would go into your pedal. Um, it would actually set like that in here um, so what we were trying to figure out was how the linkage would linkage with the booster and everything and it kept being too long so um, what we found out the proper way to do this there's no videos online of anybody doing it on an F100 uh, this year model so you basically you would lose this whole linkage all this comes off um, bracket when you mount it on your uh, booster the the points are going to be up you can see where it's kind of scuffed a little bit where the linkage was on there um, and when the booster comes out of the box it has your lock nut on here and that's it you come it comes with this joint and then this long heim joint so um, What's going to happen is it's going to sit in there just like that. This is actually going to come all the way through the firewall. Um, the Ford has the four bolts through the firewall already, so that mounts up nicely. Uh, this little plate right here is for the, the dust boot. Um, and when you use it with the linkage, that linkage comes through and it seals nice. Um, I did see one comment somebody had made said there was no seal uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm still going to use this and I'm going to put it in there we'll thread this out and we'll put it in there and actually mount it through the firewall backwards um, so the, the dust cover the rubber boot will actually be on the inside of the firewall um, other than that uh, what I did to get my stuff set pretty closely is my original master cylinder, I measured from the plate where it goes for, to the firewall uh, to the center of the hole, which is about five and a quarter inches. So once I got this set up on here, um, I ran it almost all the way in and then tightened up the nut on the bottom of that heim joint, or the bottom of this rod, rather. Uh, I got five inches to the center of this heim joint, So and I got plenty of adjustment on this end. So uh, what I chose to do was make sure I had all the adjustment on the inside so once we get it set up, I can actually set my pedal uh, to where I want it. So uh, just to kind of give you an indication what it's going to look like on the inside, i got to take this piece out anyway. So i got plenty of adjustment on the inside. Uh, this piece is going to ride just like this. maybe not it's going to sit like that the rubber boots going to ride just like that and it's going to stick through the inside um, probably gonna to have to take some snips and trim this just a little bit so it's not too uh, snug with the rubber seal on there doesn't cause me any binding um, basically if we walk around here to the to the engine bay the boots gonna set like that so it'll look nice and finished from the outside you won't see it on the inside so hopefully that uh, helps you out on your project um, I'll do a little follow-up video 
once everything's installed and it'll be attached to this video. Okay, we got it all installed and the brakes are, seem to be working fine. The uh, pedal just has a lot of travel in it before it starts to actually press the brakes. We've bled them down. We don't see any air in there. Uh, there is an adjustment on the uh, front of the plunger that uh, comes into the back of the master cylinder from the booster. So the easiest way to do it, to get it adjusted, is to, I got a bungee cord to kind of keep some of the weight off of the brake lines while I pull this master cylinder out. Uh, my son's going to sit inside, press the brake pedal to adjust this. Um, I don't know if you can see it. It's this adjustment right here, the locking nut on the back. I've threaded it out once, actually twice. Got it out a little far. I'm going to back it off a little bit more and then get it all put back together. Try it again. Uh, this particular model is a uh, 9 32nd and a 5 16 on the nut and the locking nut. The locking nuts to 5 16 We're just going to break that locking nut loose. Thread it in a little bit. We'll see if that uh, puts us where we need to be. Uh, he sets inside and presses the pedal and that pushes the plunger out. It makes it a whole lot easier to get to. And strapping it up with a bungee cord makes it nice so you don't have to have a third set of hands to hold your master cylinder. Okay, just got back from taking it for a test drive with the uh, new power brakes. Uh, the difference is phenomenal. Uh, I never thought drum brakes on all four wheels could feel that good. Um, so, here's what we got. Uh, one of the differences I ran into, other than the, the issues with the bracket and the, uh, the linkage, um, my original master cylinder had the large sump which is where the front brakes um, on the back side and uh, and the uh, small sump was on the front so this one is uh, is is swapped the uh, big sump is in the front and the small sump is in the back they don't look that different um, but what I found out was on uh, on one of mine I had an adapter so I had to take that adapter off. It was actually on this one to adapt it to a bigger size. So I had to take that adapter off. Um, and then I ended up having to kind of just easily unreal my uh, excess brake lines there so I could move it forward uh, the eight or 10 inches or so so I could get to the, where the master cylinder is gonna be now. So um, everything's great. Uh, mine is a 360, 390. Uh, I bought it as a 390 engine. I haven't verified whether it is or not. Uh, same as a 360, but it's an automatic. Um, so I only have two vacuum ports on my manifold. Um, one is for the power steering. I'm sorry. One is for the um, automatic transmission. Is the small one, and the other one is for the PC V valve. Uh, so I couldn't find uh, another port that had three connections. So what I did was uh, I saw online somebody else had done the same thing. They just teed into their PCV valve and uh, ran a piece of 3 8 inch heater hose off of that uh, with a plastic T and uh, over to the brake booster. Uh, everything seems to work fine. I don't have any issues uh, with idling or anything like that. So. Uh, I think that worked fine. Um, 
the kit came with uh, with a different connection uh, for this spot right here where your uh, vacuum line hooks in uh, it's a different color it's all the same size though I, I took them both off and and blew in them they both seemed or they they seem to have a different resistance uh, I'm not sure exactly what that what that does one way or the other I haven't tried it to see if it changes anything uh, the kit came with everything you need um, with except for instructions um, it's kind of disappointing that they give you everything you could possibly need I think um, to make everything work but they just don't tell you which combination of pieces you need to use so you got to kind of figure it out uh, as I showed you earlier in the video um, this bracket right here these top holes are where the uh, the linkage was in the bracket when I got it so if you actually use the, the linkage portion of it uh, on your application this whole bracket is flipped upside down um, and the linkage connects through the bottom so when you do away with the linkage and you use the straight rod through there uh, I can see it uh, if you use the rod straight through there you uh, you do away with all that linkage, it just goes straight into the back of the booster. And you can see the the grommet back there around the rod. I, I did like I was uh, hoping I was going to be able to. I just had to take a pair of snips and kind of round out the hole just a little bit in the middle. So the rod would fit through the uh, the rubber grommet. And everything would, would seal. That way I don't have any uh, wind noise or dirt and debris coming in there. Um, looking inside, if you can see, there's the grommet or seal, whatever you want to call it. It uh, it's just right there. It's hooked in that flat plate, and it goes straight in and hooks to your brake pedal. So I measured the brake pedal initially. I Just measured off the floor, um, straight up to the bot to the top edge here, and uh, it's just to set it back in the same height that I had it at before. So I don't have any difference in the way that feels. Uh, all in all, I, I think I paid two hundred and twenty dollars for the kit. That was with tax, and um, it seems like it's it's pretty well made. Uh, one thing I, I did do with mine, um, as you can see, I've, I've done a couple parts on my engine that I've replaced, uh, like the water pump and the alternator. Uh, I, I cleaned it real well with uh, uh, brake cleaner, let it dry. I took the cap off and had it taped off and everything. And, uh, and I used uh, engine clear coat on it, so hopefully that'll keep it from rusting. Uh, I tried not to get too much uh, brake fluid on the actual... Uh, master cylinder when we were when we were doing all of it because I know that eats the paint off but um, all in all I'm really pleased with it so if you have any questions or comments um, feel free to shoot me a message and hopefully it's helpful to you I looked on YouTube for a few days trying to find something um, to help me with this uh, installation and I really couldn't find anything um, for the Fords uh, there's a couple um, Ford Mustangs, uh, C10 Chevrolets and stuff like that, but I didn't see anything for the Fords. So good luck, and uh, it's uh, well worth the money, even with the uh, drum brakes all four corners.